Let us pray together. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you are here with us. Open our hearts to your love, to your truth, and to your power. Be present here. Help us to know and learn from you. And we say to you, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want you to look at your lesson sheet. The Gospel reading, Mark. I want you to watch something that God did in this lesson. Jesus has come to be baptized. And look at what God does. As soon as Jesus comes up out of the water, he sees the heavens torn apart. And the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. When the Spirit tears open the heavens to come and be with Jesus, that is a display of his power. Cuando el Espíritu bajó y rasgó los cielos, eso es un, un, un signo, un símbolo de su poder. There is nothing in all of the world, in the creative order, that can stop the Spirit of God. No hay nada en el mundo creado que pueda parar el poder de Dios. He made the world. Él hizo el mundo. He has control over the world. Él tiene control sobre todo el mundo. So he can come in and do whatever he wants. So the Spirit of God, the heavens are torn open, the Spirit of God immediately, think like a jet plane, comes from heaven to Jesus. But when the Spirit comes to Jesus, there's no more jet plane. No, it says he comes to him descending like a dove. No. It's very tender. Two things that are true about God in terms of how God deals with us. There are times when he comes in great power. Like a jet plane coming out of heaven. But then there are other times where he comes very gently and tenderly. This is how we need God. We need to, at times for God to come very powerfully. And there are times when we need God to be very gentle with us and very tender. Why is this important? Because number one, I'm showing you that this is how God acts. I'm not just making this up. Because if we are going to ask God to help us, when we suffer temptation, which is the prayer that we prayed at the beginning, there will be times when we need God to come in power, and there will be times when we need Him to come in tenderness. <laughs> If you are suffering from temptation, sometimes you need the power of God to come and break the authority 
uh, that that temptation has over you. Si ustedes están tentados, entonces el poder de Dios tiene que bajar sobre ustedes de manera poderosa para poder ayudarlos a ustedes a pelearse o a bajarse con esa tentación. It can be a demonic power. Puede ser un poder demonico. It can be a curse that's been sent to you. Puede ser una curse. Una maldición. And Jesus has to be the one to break that curse. Y Jesús tiene que ser el que el que corta esa maldición. It says in the Bible that when Jesus died on the cross, all of the curses came upon him. He, he took those curses. And he defeated those curses by his death and resurrection. There is no curse that is more powerful than Jesus. There is no demon that is stronger than the power of Jesus. So when we feel those things attacking us, that's when we need the power of Jesus like a jet plane to come in and to break the authority of that power in our lives. I have seen him do that. I have prayed with people and seen curses broken immediately. I, I've seen people who have had the power of a demon on them that would attack them, and I've seen that demon leave and not come back. Sometimes it's very obvious, but then sometimes it's very subtle. The subtle is a word that is spoken into your mind that is telling you to do something bad and it will not go away. Sometimes it's a fear that you feel inside of your heart that makes you afraid all the time because so that you cannot enjoy life. These are assaults that can be broken by the power of Jesus. So all of this is Jesus operating powerfully to break something that is strong in our lives. But then there are other places where we have been wounded, where we have been hurt by other people, where we have hurt other people, where, where we need to know his tenderness and his healing. We, we don't need Jesus to come at us like a jet plane. We need Jesus to come like a very gentle dove and touch the tender places in our hearts. So that whether we need a strong breakthrough or a very tender healing of our heart and emotions. Jesus can and will do both of them. And his ministry is perfect. He will not take one who is quietly afraid 
and hit them with a jet plane. <laughs> Nor will he take someone who needs that strength and speak to them and say, Oh, it would be really good if all of the demons left now. In other words, he knows how to minister to each individual as that individual needs. Él sabe cómo ministrar a cada individuo, de individuo dependiendo de la necesidad de cada individuo. His ministry to each one of us is always perfect. El ministerio para cada uno de nosotros es siempre perfecto. Why? Because he loves us and he knows us inside out, all that we are. ¿Por qué? Porque él nos conoce de adentro para afuera y sabe todo lo que tenemos dentro. So that today, no matter what your need is or the need of your family, you can ask him to give you, to put that need in his hands and ask him to change that need. Take something bad and turn it into something for the good. Tomar algo malo y cambiarlo a algo bueno. Now there will be things that he may ask of you. Ahora, hay a veces ocasiones en que va a pedirles a ustedes algo. You may need to forgive. Quizás usted tenga que perdonar. You may need to be willing to let go of the resentments inside. Usted debe dejar salir el resentimiento que usted tiene. You may need to come under his authority so that you live a different way. Because it's very easy. Aurora, we're, I want to show them something. Let's pretend, let's pretend I, I'm Jesus and she is one of Jesus' disciples. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not Jesus. So. Okay, so you've made the commitment to follow Christ. So come into my Now, see, if we're together, it's very easy for her to stay close, and it's easy for me to talk to her and to give to her because she's close, right? But... If, if Aurora <laughs> decides I'm going this way and she wants to go that way, then I go, Aurora! <laughs> I have to speak strongly to her. <laughs> and I have to talk to her about what is it inside of her that wants to do what she wants as opposed to what Jesus wants her to do. Come on, let's be honest with each other. Have not you had a time where you knew you wanted to do something, but you knew it was wrong? That's right. And you, say, and you say to Jesus, I know this is wrong, but I want to do it anyway. Jesus loves us so much that he will allow us sometimes to do the wrong thing. So because we need to learn that the wrong thing is harmful. You see, if she wants to do what she wants to do and not obey Jesus, that means something inside of her heart says, I know better. So Jesus has to create a circumstance where she discovers that she does not know better than Jesus. Entonces Jesús crea las circunstancias para que ella sepa y aprenda de que ella no puede hacer lo que ella quiere, que tiene que seguir. Porque Jesús 
This is hard for everyone. It's painful. Because we were God made us to walk closely with Jesus. When we walk closely with Jesus, there is peace in our lives. Even our emotions and our bodies feel better. Because there's joy. Resentment, unforgiveness, sin hurts the body as well as the emotions. So to stay close is the place of health, is the place of joy, and the place of knowing that I am not alone. God is with me. So, today, what do you need from Jesus? Do you need the power of a jet plane to break the demonic in your life? Do you need Jesus tenderly to come and heal the broken places in your heart? Or have you wandered away and you know that you're far away and you need to begin to come back? No matter what your need, Jesus is here to touch you and meet that need. Because no matter what you have done, He still forgives. No matter where you have been, He will invite you back. That's the promise. It is in the first Peter lesson. It, it says that Jesus, after he died, literally went and preached the gospel to people in hell to bring them back to him. The souls in prison, it says. You are none of us are in hell. It may feel like it sometimes. <laughs> but, but none of us are in eternal hell. So that if Jesus can reach out, even to those who are in hell, He can reach out to us. No matter where we are, no matter what we have done. Those who are being confirmed today are saying, I will stay close to Jesus no matter what. Even if it costs me. Because if you will watch, when I pray for someone to be confirmed, I, I will do three things. I place my hands on their head. That's a prayer for God's protection. I make the sign of the cross on their forehead. Asking for the Holy Spirit to touch them. The third thing I do, they get a slight slap on the cheek. That is an ancient practice for confirmation. And it is a symbol that says, even if it gets difficult, I will serve him no matter what. Y 
we live in a world where Christians are paying a very high, high price for being a Christian. So we are saying, if it were to come my way, I will still follow Jesus. So, as we enter in, I ask you to pray for them. But also, if you also need to make a commitment of your life to Christ, pero si ustedes también necesitan cometer su vida a Cristo, that you would do that this morning too. que lo hagan esta mañana también. Ok, let us pray together. Oremos juntos. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you do love us no matter where we are, where we have been, or what we have done. And that your love is stronger and more powerful than any sickness, disease, or curse. Thank you that you have defeated the power of the devil and that you invite us in to know your freedom as a child of God. Help us in this congregation, Lord, to serve you and to know the joy of your companionship wherever we are. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Amen.